Ben, nice to meet you. Hi, Ben. Nice to meet you, Damon. Hello again. Nice to meet you, Damon. It's it's interesting. You're sort of squeezing past your cast there. Uh, yeah. They've collected the award. It's your hard work, I think. It is. Yeah, that it happens, is. I've noticed That's that. That's the business. Next time. That is the business. And if we do a follow-up, it'll start me and Ian. Uh, that's, yeah. that's what's going to happen. I had a really, really good speech lined up as well, and Joe Thomas has stepped in with his bumbling pseudo Hugh Laurie looks yeah. and uh, screwed it all up. But yeah, I think Hugh Laurie right. actually rehearses some of those speeches. Yeah, the bumbling oh, ones. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, no, yeah, it's okay. It was our hard work, but we're okay to share a little bit of the live with some people who may have had something to do with its success, I yeah. suppose. Yeah, we're gr grudging. And I mean, the movie, let's be perfectly honest. Right. Did you expect the success? Because I don't think anyone else in England did. I think genuinely you'd have to have been a lunatic to have expected it to be as successful as it was. Wouldn't you? I mean, don't think anyone did. But um, no, it's great. I mean, it's, you know, it's all good. It's all been very exciting in there. We worked hard at it, but I don't think we thought it would be the most successful comedy of all time British film. So, no. Yeah. And also, we were, watching, we were watching a clip of the Transformers earlier, and the, on the 3D theme, which looked amazing. And we're like, our film took about twice as much as that at the box office in the UK, and that 30 second clip was probably paid for the whole of our film. So, uh, yeah, it's all right. I mean, with the extraordinary box office success, does come that pressure and that assumption that there is going to be a sequel. You, you, I mean, you joked about it before, but do you feel there's any room left to grow with these characters? I think, as, I mean, you know, I, I don't know, do you know the film, have you seen the film Police Academy? <laughs> I don't know if you're aware of the sequels they very successfully did for Police Academy. I think that's the model. That's the model we're looking for, is the Police Academy. They'll be in... They'll be in to Moscow. Mr. Moscow will be number five. They'll be in Russia at number five. Number also, six will be a new class. We're just going to, like, franchise it out to any studio that wants to do it. So, basically, they can hire their own cast to a new generation. So, there'll be probably 64, I'd imagine. That would yeah. be a useful the number Police of Academy. Police Academy is definitely the model we're looking for, yeah. yeah. Congratulations again. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks nice to meet you. Thanks for the first question. How does it feel to be holding that lovely, shiny award in your hand? It's absolutely lovely. I mean, I'd say it's voted for by the public. So it's a real kind of just just really like an indictment of what they kind of think of, of the film, especially compared to all these amazing kind of comedy films that are up there tonight, like Crazy Stupid Love and, and Bridesmaids and things like that. So it's a real honour to, to have it. Really, we were all really chuffed. I mean, the box office success, now the award success. Why do you think people have loved the Inbetweeners and the Inbetweeners movie so much? I, I hate to say it because they're around, but it's the writers. They're they're very good. They are very good writers, and, and they write stuff that's not only very very funny, but um, it, it it does it reflects a lot of people's kind of late teenage years, and and so. Yeah, I, I think it's just very true and honest and heartfelt in places, but ultimately just very funny, and, and it's down to the writing, ultimately. You mentioned that reflection of the late teenage years. Is that the same for you? Is there sort of a moment on set where you think, oh, God, how familiar that is? Um, I wouldn't say any particular moments, but just being in that group of, um, of guys that were more inclined to talk about girls than to them just through kind of nerves and, and all that kind of stuff is it, definitely how I, I was in my kind of late teens. I think I literally tapped a girl on the shoulder about to ask her out and as she turned around ran in the other direction and that is gen genuinely what happened when I was about 14. Um, so yeah I kind of lived my life I suppose uh, in uh, with, with the kind of mindset but not necessarily doing what they did I think because we were just too sensible to actually do anything that was too crazy. I'm curious, when you sort of originally signed on for the Inbetweeners, or what, maybe three years ago, four years, four years ago? Now, yeah. four was there any moment where you thought, this might lead somewhere, or was it just like... Do you know what? We were all so happy to be paid for, to, to just be paid to act, really. I was just ecstatic. I, I, I'd done a non-paid play out of drama school and so to be paid to act was just this amazing thing and I still kind of thank my lucky stars every day whenever someone offers me a job <laughs> just because I know so many very very talented brilliant actors out there that aren't getting the work and it's not through lack of talent it's just through through luck I think at the end of the day so um, so yeah I, I, I wouldn't say there was any one particular moment where we felt like oh this is going to go somewhere it's just a very gradual thing but yeah we weren't really thinking that far ahead as soon as we got commissioned for a second series we were like oh my god this is amazing we, we're doing it again Talking about the future, what are you working on at the moment? And uh, a play in the West End uh, called Step Nine of Twelve, which is going to be on in May uh, at Trafalgar Studios. And um, yeah, it's a very different thing for me because it's very dark and uh, it's got a it's got a comedic edge to it, but it's not strictly a comedy. And it's about an ex-alcoholic, and that's kind of who I'm playing. So yeah, it's nice to do something a bit kind of 
meatier and more serious. Uh, yeah. I mean, fans love the boys. Would you like to see where Neil goes in the future? Would you like to come back for another movie if that opportunity? It, 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 it could be funny to see where, where all those boys end up, definitely. Um, but ultimately, it's down to the writers. If Ian and Damon uh, write another script, I'm sure it'd be brilliant. But if, if they don't want to do that, because they are the in-betweeners, you know, uh, it, it, all these things that happen to these characters genuinely happen to them or their friends when they were younger, believe it or not. And um, so, yeah, it, it depends what they want to do, really. It's all up to them.